Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As you guys can see, we are in the shop and today we're finally gonna be aligning the Corvette. Uh, we're actually not taking it to a shop for this attempt. We're gonna attempt to do this at home and to do that, we picked up a special tool. So let's go ahead, get that tool open and we'll show you what we got. So we have our uh, package here. Let's go ahead, cut this thing open and uh, get this unboxed. This uh, should be pretty simple. All right, so what do we have here? We have some cardboard. So as you guys can see, we got some uh, tape measures here, and uh, no, that's not the only thing that we bought. Uh, this is actually a tow plate kit that we picked up from Jags or Summit, whatever it was, and uh, the brand is Longacre. So let's go ahead, get this unpackaged, and I'll show you how this is gonna work. All right, so here, like I said, are the Longacre racing products. This is the tow plate kit. You basically got two plates, and they also come with two measuring tapes. And basically what we're gonna do is, we're gonna set these plates on the front axle of the Corvette. You set up one plate on the passenger side, so the passenger side wheel, one plate on the driver's side wheel. And you basically just take your measurement from the front to back and see you know, how towed the wheels are. All right guys, so we have the Long Acre tow boards like we said. And uh, you guys will notice, if you guys look, there's a little magnet right here. And what that allows you to do is actually stick your tape measure and it will stay in place. And that's on both the front and the back. So that's on one board. I don't think the other board has it. Let's go double check. I don't think it does. So at the back of the front wheel, we have pretty much 74 inches exactly. And on the front, we've got pretty much 75 and a half. So what that tells me is that we've got, give or take roughly half inch of negative camber. We want a 1 16th of negative camber. So we're gonna have to go ahead and get the car back up in the air. All right guys, so we're under the car and what we're gonna be adjusting is the tow rod that I'm pointing to with a wrench. You're gonna knock the jam nut loose with a 22 millimeter wrench. All right, there you go. And uh, so we've, Loosen the jam nut. And so now that we've got the jam nut loose, we can go ahead and actually start adjusting the tie rod. The tie rod is gonna take a 13 millimeter wrench, and this will be right here, and you're gonna adjust it using the metal stem right here. And so like I said, we're towed out right now. We need to adjust it by bringing the threads in. So you need to spin this in the right direction so that the threads are going in towards the tie rod itself. So I actually just tightened the jam nut back down and what I did was I loosened it, like we said, I grabbed the tie rod and I did four quarter turns. So I went you know, like one, two, three, four, four turns. And that brought the tie rod in. I don't know how much yet, but you know, we're trying to get that not quite half an inch, like a little less than half an inch so that we're still towed out one sixteenth of an inch. So we'll do four on this side. We'll do four over on the passenger side, four quarter turns like we said, and uh, we'll see where we are. All right guys, so here's our new measurements. I was actually more precise this time. So after moving the turns, four quarter turns in, we're now at 75 and 3 sixths in the front of the tire. So right here, and we're at 74 and 3 sixteenths in the back. So we're an inch off, so we obviously need to tighten this more. But uh, I'm kind of surprised that the four quarter turns uh, didn't really change us that much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do four more quarter turns. And this is just going to be a reiterative process of elimination. All right, guys, you'll see that we have moved the front of the tire more inward. And we've brought the rear of the tire more outward. So... We went from 74 and 3 16 to 74 and a half to 74 and 3 quarter. So we're now on our last adjustment that we just made. We made three turns and we were basically towed out zero. So for us to go negative on the front and every time we turn this inward, 
Yeah, I should clarify. So it's four turns inward, four turns inward, three turns inward. I think for our last one, what we're gonna do, we're gonna do one quarter turn outward. I mean, it would be fine running the car towed out on the front at zero. But like I said, we're trying to get that, you know, that negative one sixteenth of tow. Might be kind of hard to do, but we're gonna do one turn out. We'll see what our results are and we'll go from there. All right guys, here's our final measurement. We got 74 and 13 sixteenths on the front. And we got 74 and 12 sixteenths on the rear if you convert that up from three quarter to sixteenths. So 13 sixteenths in the front, 12 sixteenths in the back. That is our negative one sixteenth of an inch. And guys, I just kind of stumbled upon this, you know, like I said, we've only got what four, maybe five times of raising the car, adjusting it and lowering it. Now guys, let me say this one thing. This will not be exactly precise. An alignment rack obviously will do this a lot better, but for me, just wanting to get the car aligned, you know, good enough to where we could start driving it. That's all we're trying to do here. I'm not like doing a precision alignment. Plus, these toe plates are kind of meant for the racetrack. You know, I, yeah, you could use them at home like we are, but like I said, just a full disclaimer, you know, this is not as precise as an alignment rack. We never touched the camber, but kind of like we said, you know, the camber plates, I've already discussed it with Ryan from After Dark Speed and his camber plates uh, on the zero settings actually is what Fought racing is what you want that at so you could go ahead and take pop the center caps out buy that gauge Stick that on there and figure out what you want But since we've got a baseline of the measurements that we're wanting for both the camber as well as the toe and the caster is not really adjustable on the Corvette All right guys, so we actually went on a test drive last night and the car is driving perfectly fine It's not pulling to the left. It's not pulling to the right. The only problem that we still have is the steering wheel is not straight so as you guys can see, there is a piece of tape on there. That is actually the where the steering wheel is sitting at 12 o'clock. But if you're actually looking at the steering wheel, it's actually still pointed to about the 11 o'clock position. And how we're gonna fix that is actually gonna go back under the car and adjust the tie rods one more time. So my steering wheel was pointed to the left. What you really need to do is if it's pointing to the left, you need to adjust everything to the right. And after adjusting this thing like four or five times, we finally got the wheel straight. And then I did one half turn. Well, guess what? The steering wheel and steering rack is kind of aggressive. That one half turn didn't make difference. Put the car back on the ground, went for a test drive. It was still, it was slightly better, but it wasn't aggressive at all. So finally we came back home, put the car back on a lift, got back under it yet again. And basically what we did this time was I did four half turns. So, you know, 180 degree turns to the right put the car back on the ground, went for a test drive. It was like 99% better. It was 100% straight, but it was to cocked to the right a little bit. Came home, did one full half turn back to the left, and we're good. So guys, if you're gonna be adjusting the steering wheel, uh, trying to straighten out, do not do half measures, do full half turns. I was told quarter turns from the first guy who told me to put it to the left, and that guy was wrong. So. Honestly, guys, if you're gonna, like I said, adjust the steering wheel, do full half turns and in whatever direction you're trying to point the wheel. In my case, the wheel was to the left, we got it back to the right, then it was too far right, then we moved it back to the left. So it's just, it's just one of those things and if I'm a little worked up, it's because I thought this was gonna take me 30 minutes, I've been out of here for over two hours. So, well that includes test driving time and all that, but you know how it is. So. The car is 100% aligned. Now the only caveat to this entire thing, like I said earlier in the video, is this is not a professional alignment. If you guys are expecting 100% perfect alignment, I really don't think you could do it by yourself at home. You have to take it to a shop with a rack. This will be good enough for me. My suspension is fully adjustable. Coilovers, uh, sway bar end links, the bushings, the camber plates, the coilover height, the dampening, you know, so I've got all these adjustable pieces in the front and the back. And uh, so that pretty much is kind of going to get you ballpark. But yeah, with enough patience and enough practice and enough times, you know, adjusting this stuff in and out, you will get it pretty close. 
So that is actually gonna be it for tonight's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did, hit that like button. If you guys want to see me adjust the rear end with Ryan over at After Dark Speed, hit that subscribe button, turn on your bell notifications. And if you guys want to help support the channel, check out the links down below. I should have a link to the toe plates. We should be able to provide that for you, as well as check out our website, bonecrusherss.com. Thanks guys. Have a great one.